This is a companion tutorial to the project files I released on Gumroad. If you want to follow along or just download the generator, you can do so through the link in the description. First, some background on the technique. Wikipedia describes L systems as a formal grammar for translating strings into geometric structures, or vice versa. They were developed in 1968 by Aristide Lindenmayer, a Hungarian theoretical biologist and professor at the University of Utrecht. Later, the idea would be expanded by Polish computer scientist Przemysław Prusinkiewicz to include higher branching structures such as plants, but we care about when they were introduced to Blender. 2018 by Animation Node's creator, Jacques Luc, and documented in a series of video tutorials. Huge thanks to him and Jimmy Gunawan, who share their knowledge. Now, you can look at the official documentation, but when I was starting this project, there was little to no information on how this node was used. Still, the website doesn't have everything on it, so I took my own notes until it's updated. I prefer this technique to other specific plant add-ons, since it's free and it gives you a high degree of control over the finished look. Uh, it's also mathematical, meaning that if you need to implement it in the future, uh, you're already mostly there and you're never relying too heavily on one add-on. That said, there are add-ons that come with wonderful automated physics and things like that. Um, presets, leaves, depending on your use case, it may be easier for you to take a look at those first. So this is what it's going to look like when you open the file. I'm opening it in 2.9 because right now 3.0 geometry nodes isn't compatible with animation nodes. And the first thing I'm going to do is just disable the particle system so we can see what we're doing. The particle system is really simple. It just points to these objects in a collection and it has some physics and some uh, random rotation and scale just to give you a few extra options to choose from in the end, and it looks a little bit more natural. But the second thing that you might notice is that this trunk looks really trash. Uh, it's all low poly, the cylinders don't even match up, and they're non-manifold, and I'll tell you why that is. It's like that by design because animation nodes is programmed in Python, and Python can be very slow. Here it is. Um, additionally, the L system node can't pass the information from the previous generation on to the next one. So each time that you're stepping forward in generations, it's recalculating everything that came before that. And as a consequence, if you're working with live L systems, say in a growth simulation, then your render times are going to get exponentially larger the more generations that you have. So that's definitely a drawback of this technique. Next, you're going to want to look at the L system node. Uh, you might notice that it's missing a few options here, and that's because you have to go to the end menu and enable them manually. You hit the end key to bring that up, and each time that you add the node um, L system, you'll have to do that manually on each of them. So that's just something to keep in mind, including the JKM outputs right there if you want to use the um, append orientation lists. I'm going to show you how to fix this problem with the trunk now, but I don't do it in this scene because you don't need it while the leaves are covering it. You could try to add a remesh modifier to it, but you can see immediately that the results are unoptimal and the generation times are much slower as well. Now if you feel like downloading another add-on, Jimmy Gunawan describes a way to solve this problem. And here's where I think that the technique really starts to take off. He takes the edges from animation nodes and outputs them into sphere chalk. And from there you can see the remesh modifier has a much, much better time of trying to interpret what's there. This is his node group right here. He goes into better detail in his video about different ways you can set this up. You can do all sorts of things with this, and you can take it even further. Add a particle system and remesh that into it. Add a displacement modifier. Go ahead and animate it over time. Um, you have such fine control over um, seemingly organic patterns, and 
I'm sure with geometry nodes coming out soon, there's only going to be an increase in the um, in the speed and the number of ways that you can apply this technique to create different things.